Factors are an extremely common data structure in R because they hold categorical data. That is, factors are vectors that store predefined values or categories. This video has three parts. In the first part, I show you the theory of factors so that we understand their behavior. In the second part, I illustrate with a very simple factor that is male and female. And in the third part, I step it up with a more realistic use case of factors where I plot trading volume for the month of January. Factors represent categorical data. That is data that can be assigned or associated to one of a category of values. However, more specifically, the factor can be categorical or ordinal. An example of a categorical factor would be sex. That is to say, a person is either male or female, and they are, can be assigned to one of two categories. Also, in investing, the industry or sector would be a categorical factor. Is the company in healthcare, financial services, energy, technology, for example. In those cases of sex and industry, generally, the categories aren't ranked. We don't say one is better or higher than the other. But in many cases, the categories do have a ranking. For example, if we were to survey participants and ask for their education and income bracket, to what bracket do they assign themselves? For example, are they do they have a master's, a college degree, a high school diploma, then these brackets would have a natural ranking and this would be an ordinal factor, but we're not going so far as a cardinal data, right? Because they aren't quantified, they are just ranked. Secondly, attributes are metadata in R, and so metadata is data about a data, and in R, attributes are very important because we can associate or assign attributes to any object. And in the case of factors, there are two attributes associated with the vector. So attributes are a list of name value pairs attached to a vector. And in the case of a factor, we're gonna see, I'll show you that there are two attributes associated with the vector and that makes it a factor. Third, and this point is counterintuitive at first, I think, factors actually build on integer vectors. And that's true in R also of arrays, matrices, and date times in the sense that they build on atomic vectors. Integers are one instance of an atomic vector. That was the first video in this introductory playlist. So atomic vectors are a fundamental building block in, building block in R. It, we have integer vectors. Factors actually build on those integer vectors by adding two attributes. And it's probably, if you think about it, somewhat intuitive because we have different categories and if we want have an ordinal factor, we wanna rank them, all we really need are integers to say one, two, three, which category does this observation associate with? Finally, Factors are, in this way, vectors that only contain predefined values. Why we have a set of categories, and they may be even ordered, but it's a predefined set, and an observation is either going to need to be assigned to one of those categories or none at all. I also have two images here just to highlight some of that theory, including here based on Hadley Wickham's uh, advanced R book, just this notion that we have atomic vectors, again, first video in this playlist, to go back if you wanna um, just review that, and our basic atomic vectors in R are logical, integer, double, and character. Integer and double, that's double floating precision, right, where we wanna go to decimal places, for example. Integer and double together are the numeric vector types. So those four types are really the most common. And as you can see here, factor or categorical vectors actually build on the integer. And then secondly, I also using Hadley Wickham's uh, graphical representation here of the factor, I have here the integer vector, that's what it really is. And in this case, 
I have a fact, uh, a, an integer vector only of length uh, four, and the values are one, two, two, and one. And I really want that to reflect, uh, let's say, male, female, female, male. Then all that really happens in R is that integer vector adds two attributes, right? That's a list of name value pairs. That first attribute here, here's the name, here's the value. That first attribute is the class is factor. Its objects have a class. And in this case of a factor, the class is factor. So this here, this first attribute converts the integer vector, so to speak, into a factor. But however, that wouldn't be complete because again, that factor is a vector of predefined values. So R needs to store somewhere the actual levels in the factor. And that's the second attribute. You can see here levels, that's the levels are simply a character vector. In this case, I only have two, but in many cases I would have more than one. In this case, there's only two levels, M for male, F for female. So I have one, two attributes, that's a list of two name value pairs associated with the integer vector, and this makes it a factor and really tells us most of what we need to know about this factor. So here I have a code chunk in my notebook file, and I'm just going to define a variable sex care, and I'm gonna put uh, three males in it, so to speak, uh, M for male, and you can see here, C for combine, uh, three strings, uh, all M's, and I'm gonna assign that to sex care, hit control enter. And in my environment panel tells me I have a sex care variable. It is a character vector of length three. And here's the first three entries in that vector, the only three in this case, but it's not a factor. So now I would like to really translate that or create a factor. And so I'm going to call my factor sex factor. So I'm going to give it a different variable name. And I'm going to use the R command factor that creates a factor. It would like a vector as input. I could be do it on the fly, but I've already created the sex care vector. So that's the vector that I want to create a factor out of. And then I would like to tell it the levels. That's the parameter in here in this factor function. And my levels are... I just have the two, so uh, my levels are defined here by a character vector, male and female. And then control enter. And you notice now I have a second value here in my environment panel, sex factor. And I'm getting that feedback that this is a factor with two levels. Here they are, M and F. And now if I want to, I could do a table of sex, my sex care. That's just my character vector. And you'll see here, I get the, uh, I have three M's, um, but that's it. However, if I do a table of sex factor, then I get a different sort of table to reflect the idea that my factor is a set of predefined values. And this factor is includes two, M for male, F for female, and I don't have any females in there yet or any values in her F, but my table is reflecting that with a zero. So part of the definition of being a factor is that R is aware of all of the potential categories, even if one or more of them is empty. And then my type of, a command I used in the video introducing atomic vectors to check for type. If I do type of sex care, as you might expect, I'm being told it's a character vector. Again, a specific instance of an atomic vector. And then, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, what we might not expect, but would probably make sense as we think about it, is if I do type of sex factor, that is, strictly speaking, an integer vector. And I can, I can get the, um, however, it's more than an integer vector, and I can get that by doing the attributes of sex factor. And notice there, I get a list of the attributes. Attributes are, is a list of name value pairs associated with the object, the object in this case being an integer vector. 
And so here's that first attribute, or actually let me start with here. Is that here's the first attribute that I would look at. The class is factor. It's an integer vector, but it, it's a class. So objects have classes. In this case, it's a factor class. And this is what really definitionally or existentially defines my integer vector as a factor. And then, but that wouldn't be enough. I'd also need to know the levels of the factor. And that's the second attribute here in the list. You can see here's the name of that list element. And it itself is a character vector, but it's the levels of my factor. And I can, I have that class command to specifically, to, if I wanted to specifically check the class of an object, in this case, the class of my sex factor is a factor. Finally, my, uh, my factor here is not ordered, right? We don't have any, we're not saying uh, M is greater than F or vice versa, but, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we can have categorical data or ordinal data. Now I wanna make it ordinal, let's say for whatever reason, so I'm going to redefine sex factor, and I'm going to use the ordered command in R, which orders my factor. So it needs to know what factor am I ordering. I'm going to take the sex factor, and this time I'm going to give it the levels. Level uh, Levels equal to, and this time I am going to define the order as F and then M. I hit enter and notice here subtle change in the environment panel sex factor changed from factor to ordered factor so we really went from a categorical factor to an ordered or what we could call an ordinal categorical uh, fact, uh, factor and I can check that with the uh, structure command sex factor Notice we get that feedback that the structure of this is an ordered factor with two levels. So the with two levels would have shown before, but notice with F less than M really meaning F comes before M. And this is significant, for example, when we go to a plot or a graph, certain categorical variables, sometimes we do want to be deliberate about the left to order represent left to right representation of the different factors. So to show you my realistic example, some of the code I'm not going to explain in detail, including I'm going to load a reader package, which makes it very handy for loading in various file formats into a data frame in R. And I do that with this command here. So I'm going to be creating the data frame called vol underscore D, which I chose to mean signify volume daily, or it's short for volume daily. It's reading in my local file, which I downloaded from the OCC website, Derivative Clearinghouse. And then I enforced, I've got some parameters here that will enforce the, uh, or create that uh, date a column or date variable in the data frame. But I'll just hit control enter there, read this in and create the data frame. And I can look at it here. And what I have is a data frame that happens to have 21 observations because I cut this off just for the month of January, 2019. So I have 21 trading days. You can see here is January 31st, 2019. And I just have uh, the second column, that's the second of two variables, which is the total, in this case, is the total trading volume on that trading day. OCC already aggregated it across several exchanges. So that's all I have for a data frame. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to add a third column to vol underscore D, my data frame. I'm going to call it day, and it's going to be, use the weekdays function and uh, base function in R, which uh, really retrieves for me the weekday based on the date, right? So I read that in uh, as day, and you'll notice I get the feedback here. My data frame now has a third variable or third feature, if you want to call it that. I'll just go ahead and take a look, and here it is. And so with that weekdays command, R then... Um, T figures out that January 31st, 2019 was a Thursday. The day before that was a Wednesday. 
But what I have here with the this day column, and if I just even just go down to the, I'll clear that out a little bit. If I just go down and check the structure of it, of all D day, right, I get a character vector length 21, all right, and those are the character values in it. And now what I want to do is I want to convert that into a factor, right? So I'm going to take the same vol D vector, character vector, however, I'm going to use as factor because I'm not creating a fresh vector. So I'm not, I'm not creating a fresh, a fresh factor. So I don't use that factor command that I used above. But in this case, I just use as factor to take the character vector and translate it or treat it as a factor. So R needs to know what vector I'm doing that with. And that's with my vol day. And that's all I need to do. Control enter. And now I'll check the structure of, or actually I'll just go right back to that command. And notice I have translated the uh, character vector into a factor with five levels. It's giving me the factor. And here now we can understand under the hood, um, it is an integer vector. So going down further, now let's just say I want to plot that. And here, more code that I'm not going to go into detail, but um, I can take uh, create vol weekdays. And what I'm going to do there is aggregate. I'm going to take that total trading volume, which is now per day, but I'm going to sum it by my categories, right? So I that I have a by parameter here and I give it a list. In this case, only one category. My, my day uh, variable here is now a category, so I can do this. And I'm summing trading volume by Friday. Uh, all the Thursdays get added together just like that. So if I look at vol weekday, or actually before I do that, let me give it more natural column names with the column name command. And then I'll look at this and you can see I get the new vol weekdays data frame, but because I aggregated, I aggregated by the categories, right? We had five categories in that factor and I'm summing them. So this is the total trading day for all of the Fridays in January, for all of the Mondays in January, etc. I'll close that. And my final command here creates the bar plot total trading day, uh, total, tra total tra trading volume by day. And did you expect this? Well, maybe not. But why is why am I getting Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Well, this is a factor. These are alphabetical because it's categorical factor. It's not an ordered or ordinal factor. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here right after I created the fact as factor. If I had thought ahead on that, I could have done vol D day. I could say, well, I am going to order that, treat that as an ordered uh, categorical or ordered factor. I need to give it the that factor that I'm doing that to. And then the reason I have this up here in comments is I didn't have to retype it. And so you can see here, I'm taking that factor, which was unordered or just a mere categorical. I'm ordering it and putting it back as day, which is going to change um, this slightly, right? You can see here, I expand here. I do currently have day as a factor with five levels, but I'm going to, I'm changing the nature of this slightly with this command. And you can see here day is now an ordered factor with five levels. And then knowing that I'm going to rerun all three of this. So I rerun the vol weekdays. That is, um, that is the basis of the plot. Rerun all that. And big now, because it's an ordered factor, I get them in the order that I specify. So that's a somewhat realistic application. 
of factors, and I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to the channel, and you'll get a notification of my next video. Thank you.